we have something called a mole. And we're going to look at this and how it relates to this Avogadro's number. Now, what exactly is a mole? It's not the animal. We're talking about a mole as in, uh, in chemistry and in physics, we talk about this, constant, this uh, concept here. So it really means the amount of a substance. Now that seems super dodgy. I mean, that doesn't really help us very much, right? So let's maybe make it more useful. We often say it's one mole spelled M-O-L. So that's usually how it's actually written like this. So one mole. And we're going to define it. We're going to say it's the number of atoms. So we're actually counting how many atoms that are in, this is actually how it's defined here. It's 12 grams. So in other words, zero point, what would that be? Zero, one, two kilograms of what we call carbon 12. Now when we say, uh, maybe I'll actually define it. Instead of saying C12, I'll say carbon 12, just to make it more clear here. So we have the element carbon, and we call it carbon 12. So now in order to understand this properly, we sort of have to understand how we actually write these different elements. So it turns out if we have something like carbon, now, if you look at your periodic table, carbon is the sixth element on your periodic table. So it turns out this number right here tells us something, and this number over here tells us something. This is carbon-12. So when we say it's called carbon-12 like this, it tells us this is carbon with a 12 on top. Now, what are these different things here? Well, this bottom number right here is actually called the atomic number. Okay, that's what's really important. This is called the atomic number. Now, so we're sort of doing some atomic physics at the same time. This one here is called the mass number. They're different. This is because if you think about the nucleus of an atom, so if you think about a really, really simplified version of an atom, you might have some neutrons. So let's just say we look at the center of an atom. Let's say I have one. Uh, well, actually, it turns out, let's say I'm just drawing these right here. This turns out this right here tells me the number of protons in the nucleus. So in this case right here, if I've got carbon, it's the sixth element in the periodic table. So it turns out this, this number right here tells me that the core of this thing is one, two, let's say three, four, five, six protons in the center. But it's also got little thingies called neutrons. So this right here is also, this right here is the number. Now this mass number is not the number of neutrons. This is the number of protons plus neutrons. So it turns out, as long as you can subtract, if you say, well, 12 minus 6, that tells me, oh, that means there's also 6 neutrons. So that means if I want to draw those, I would maybe draw 6 of them. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, let's just say. So this right here would represent a neutron, and the little black ones could represent protons, let's say. So this right here would be the nucleus of this particular carbon atom. So it would have 6 protons in it, and it turns out uh, this number here, Although it's called the mass number, it's also sometimes called the nucleon number because that tells us how many particles live in the nucleus. See, that's why they're called nucleons. So what do we do with this information? Well, first of all, this number, do you notice we don't call it carbon-12-6? Do you notice that there's, there's three th different factors in here? There's the atomic number, the mass number, and then the name of the element. Do you notice we just call it carbon-12? That's because this C and this 6 are redundant. If you, if you can find a periodic table, it turns out carbon is the sixth element in the periodic table, so that's why it has a six. So this six tells you it's carbon. This carbon tells you it's a six. You can't have carbon with a four down here. That wouldn't be allowed. Or carbon with a two. That's not allowed because it turns out that's not carbon. So this C and the six are redundant. It's like the, uh, what is it called? The Department of Redundancy Department. I mean, you, you don't need both of them. But what you do need is a top number because it turns out there's things called isotopes. And an isotope is just something with the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. Turns out these little neutrons are here, if you have a different number of them, then that changes it. So you can have, for example, you're allowed to have carbon-14. That's something else. That exists called carbon-14. And if you have carbon-14, what that tells you is it's just like carbon, carbon-12, except it's got two extra neutrons in it. So it's like you just added it to two extra blue dots in the center. So... In order to understand this, I've had to sort of teach you about atomic physics here, about at least the nucleus of it. But that's okay. I think that's fine. So if we look at this, then, this is how it's defined. It turns out one mole is just the number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12.
So this is this is how it's defined. This is we can say you know, in mathematics here we can say it's sort of three. It's like equals equals equals. This is exactly defined as this. That's how we define one mole. Now there are three players in this. So the next thing is called Avogadro's number. Now this one right here we actually call it. We say it's the number of atoms in one mole of carbon twelve. In other words, it's the number of atoms that there are in one mole of carbon 12. So in other words, this one right here, now this is a special number here. This right here tells us, I mean, this one mole defines the number of atoms, but how do we actually know the number of atoms? See, it's, it's like these two are defined with each other. Avogadro's number and one mole are kind of one side of the equation and the other side of the equation. So how many atoms are there in one mole of carbon 12? Well, it turns out we have a symbol for this. Okay, we have actually a symbol for Avogadro's number. We call it N A. That's Avogadro's number. N with a little subscript A. And it's defined as this number, 6.022, it's usually uh, given, times 10 to the 23. That is how many atoms there are in one mole of carbon-12. So that's how we define Avogadro's number. Okay, we define it as such. That's it. That's all there is to it. So this tells us, hey, the number of atoms in one mole of carbon-12 is this many atoms, 6.022 times 10 to the 23. That's like a 6 with 23 zeros at the end of it. And we define the mole, remember, as just that's just the number of atoms in 12 grams of this. So now they're defined with each other, but we have something called a molar mass. And that's the actual mass in grams of one mole. So in this case right here, it turns out this is the same, this is important here, this is the last player here we need, this is the same as the mass number. This is the same as the mass number, but this is in grams. So what I mean by that is, let's say we went up here. Let's say we had this carbon 12, carbon 12 like this. This mass number 12, that tells me then that, hey, that in this case would be my molar mass. My mass would actually be 12 grams because that is the same as your mass number in grams. So that means if you're given this little element like this, this carbon 12, if this top number here is 12, then you know that that's your mass of one mole. It's 12 grams. That's how we use this. Now let's put it all together. I think that's more important is, is sort of what do you do with all this information? Well, we can define a little thing called n, a little lowercase n here. And that's just the number of moles you're looking at. So in this case here, because you're not always just looking at carbon-12, you can look at any element, and in, 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 in fact you can be any isotope of any element. So it does get more complicated, and this is how we simplify things, I think, is that we say, well, let's just count the number of moles. And it turns out that is going to be defined as the mass that you have. So the mass that you have, and let's say this time we're going to measure it in grams. Maybe I'll actually define it like this. I'll say in grams. So the mass that you're actually looking at in grams divided by the mass number, which is also in grams. The reason is, is that what if I say, oh, I don't just have 12 grams of carbon-14, what if I have, I don't know, 92 grams of it? Then how many moles do I have? Well, I have to, def I have to find out how many times does 12 fit into 92, it turns out, because remember, it's got a mass number of this. So this is how we do it. We say n, which is the number of moles, is just the mass that you have, the mass of whatever it is you're looking at in grams, divided by its mass number. That's how we can put this all together. So this is one really nice to use equation here. And if you actually want to know the number of atoms in any material then, well, all you have to do is uh, you can define it. It turns out then it's just this number, number of moles, times Avogadro's number. So remember, that's just how we define it. So the number of atoms, in case you want that. So maybe you want the number of moles, or maybe you want the number of atoms. So the number of atoms is just, uh, let's say we say, hey, I have, I have, let's say, 10 moles of some material. Then I would say, oh, great, 10 times Avogadro's number. Why is that? Because Avogadro's number tells you how many atoms are in one mole. So if I have 10 of these moles, then obviously I have 10 of this. So I hope that makes it make sense. It does help if you do some practice with it. So I have an example here. So how many atoms are there in 8 grams of helium-4? Now, before getting started, it really helps to figure out what helium-4 actually is. So we write it as helium like this. Now, it turns out if you look at a periodic table, it's the second element 
there is. So it's helium with a little 2 here. And if we call it helium 4, then the 4 goes on top. So what this tells me is that this bottom number right here, that's my atomic number. And this over here is my mass number. What this tells me, remember, that's in grams. So now I know that my mass number for, for helium-4, I know that its mass number is 4 grams. Now I want to know how many atoms there actually are. So let's, let's maybe figure this out. How do I know how many atoms I have? Number of atoms is n times Avogadro's number. So I'm going to write that down. So the number of atoms, this is what I'm looking for, is just equal to n times Na. This is what I want. See, this, is, this will solve the question. But I don't know what n is. Do you notice? I know what n is. That's Avogadro's number. That's just 6.022 times 10 to the 23. Remember, we defined it up here. Right? But what do I do? Whoops. What do I do then if I don't know n? Well, I guess I have to try to find n. So that's going to be my goal then is find this. Because I don't know n. So you see, this is like my shopping list. I want the number of atoms. Here's my equation for number of atoms. I know this, but I don't know this. I guess I got to go hunting for n. And if I go back to the last page here, n, the number of moles, is the mass you have divided by the mass number. So I'm going to say that. So n is the mass I have in grams divided by the mass number, also in grams. So in this case, if I look at this then, I have 8 grams of helium-4, so I'm going to say that's the mass I have, so that's 8 grams. I divide that by the mass number, which in this case is 4, so I say 4 grams. And 8 grams over 4 grams gives me, well, the grams cancel out, 8 over 4 is just 2. That's great, now I know that n equals 2. Why do I need that? Because that gives me this n number I needed here. So therefore, I'm finally done now, so the number of atoms is just n, which is in this case is 2. So I can say 2 times Avogadro's number, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Now I could try to use a calculator for this, but I know what 2 times 6 is. That's 12. And it turns out 0 0.02, that'll give me what? 0 0.04 times 10 to the 23. If I want to do it in nice scientific notation, I can say that's 1.2 times 10 to the, let's see, that's one over, so 24 atoms. Obviously lots of atoms, but this is the answer. I've just solved it. So I hope that shows at least how you can deal with this stuff. It does take some practice, but it's totally doable. You just got to remember a few definitions, and here are the ones that I think are useful for you. But now that we've just solved this, what we can do now is maybe consider some awesome, awesome jokes. And when I say awesome, I mean terrible, terrible, terrible. So uh, the first one is, um, oh God, I can't believe I'm sharing this with you. You're going to think so much less of me, but oh well. Um, all right, so what do you get if you buy 6.022 times 10 to the 23 mosquitoes? You call it molaria. Ha, 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 ha. Um, Oh, I have another one. Actually, just wait. Um, what do the chemists use to make guacamole? Avogadros. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, that's extra funny. If you actually know how to make guacamole, you need avocados. Anyway, it's a play on the word. You know what? Bad, bad jokes. Forget.